In the next few days, the world will be celebrating the ninth edition of the International Day of Peace, 24th of September to be precise. The day has been set aside by the United Nations to draw attention and promote peace initiatives to engender peaceful coexistence and development among humanity. The theme for this year is Recovering Better for an Equitable and Sustainable World. Why do we need to celebrate? We sincerely apologize for that hitch, but we will continue from here and go back later when we have better signals in our studio in Ibadan. I am Elizabeth Omori. Thank you so much for joining us. Security agencies in Kaduna have rescued Major Datun abducted by kidnappers at the Niger Defense Academy staff quarters in Kaduna. He was rescued by combined operations of military, air force, Department of State Security Services and other security agencies. This followed marching order by the top military echelon to relevant security agencies to rescue the abducted Major. A statement by Kone Ezindu Idima. Deputy Director, Army Public Relations, one division of the Nigerian Army, Kaduna, said Niger troops exchanged fire with bandits, but the gallant troops overpowered them and rescued Major Datung. He, however, sustained minor injuries, but has been treated in a medical facility and handed over to the Niger Defense Academy. The statement further said the operation will continue in Afaka Forest until the bandits are neutralized. All right, we now have signals in our Ibadan studio. Let's go back to Larry for more. Continue to trail the whereabouts of Duduwawa in Bogu, local government area of Niger State. Dr. Muhammadu Mohammed, eight days after he was allegedly released from captivity, Fatima Aliu has an update from Zamfara State, in collaboration with other security agent operatives, have rescued 20 persons abducted by army bandits from Batsari local government area of Katsina State. The rescue of kidnapped victims across Zamfara State is obviously one of the major positive impacts of the strategies recently adopted by government to combat the protracted security challenges bedeviling the state. Some 20 persons comprising men, women and children kidnapped from Katore village in Basari local government area of Kasena State are the latest batch of the captives recently rescued by Zamfara State Police Command. The victim had been in captivity for 4 months and 27 days. Making the three days old baby abducted along with her mother five months old now. Some of the victims could not, however, make it to the press briefing, and they are currently receiving treatment at a medical facility in Gosau, the state capital. I urge the good people of Zamfara State to always remain law abiding and collaborate with the security agencies that the measures taken by the governor in collaboration with the security agencies are yielding positive results. Speakers of the State House of Assembly, Nasur Ma'azo Magaria, who was at the State Police Command Headquarters Gosau, to formally receive the victims on behalf of Governor Bello Muhammad, reaffirmed government's commitment to ensuring safe release of all other persons still in captivity across the state. The rescued kidnapped victims are expected to be handed over to Kassena State Government soonest. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. Going, going back to the story of Mina, speculations have continued to trail the whereabouts of Dodo Wawa. In Bogu, local government area of Niger State, Dr. Mahmoud Hamed, eight days after he was allegedly released from captivity, Fatima Aliu has an update. Confirmed released on the 10th of this month by Niger State Police Command to its proper relations officer, Wasu Abiodun, after spending six days in captivity. However, since the news of the release of the monarch broke, nothing has been heard from him, nor is whereabouts, as confirmed by the Wazir of Wawa, Jafari Ibrahim Bio. I want to tell you, in my capacity as Wazir of Wawa, that uh, the story about the release of uh, the Dodo of Wawa 
certainly is not something that I can confirm or deny. The fact remains that I have not seen him and I have not spoken with him. We want to uh, relieve our minds and we want to console, I mean, we want to rely on it to believe that by the special grace of God that has been released, uh, they have secured the release, his release. And we want to believe that uh, he will put, most probably should be a minor. Diligent efforts made by NTA to get further clarifications on the growing trend from the state police command proved abortive, as its proper relations officer, Wasu Abodo, who had earlier confirmed the release of the traditional ruler, declined comments, while the state government has also remained silent on the matter. Meanwhile, since the incident on the 4th of this month, the people of our community have remained calm and going about their lawful businesses. Fatima Ali, NTA News. State Police Command says a team of its command operatives has neutralized IPOP and ESN criminals and recovered their ammunition and charm. In a press release signed by Command's Public Relations Officer, Bobet Oda, the Udums, who allegedly murdered seven commuters on Monday, 19th August 2021, and set ablaze their vehicle at Anike Village in Onyocha local government, enforcing their illegal sit-at-home order were trailed to their hideouts at Ukawu Forest in Onyecha local government area of the state following a credible information. The Ulum on site and the police operatives opened fire at them and in a gun duel that ensued, one Ikem Ikwe Madrabuchi male, aged 25 years, aka Tablet, a native of Tumo village in equal local government and one Onyekachi John, male, aka Blood, aged 28 years, a native of Anike village in Onicha local government area, were fatally wounded while some of them escaped into the forest with gunshot injuries. The release has it that the remains have been deposited at the Federal Teaching Hospital Abakaliki FETHA 11 mortuary for autopsy. The following items were said to have been abandoned by the criminals and recovered by the operatives. Two AK rifles, 40 rounds of live ammunition, two locally made improvised devices, IED, some champs. Meanwhile, the command says efforts are on top gear towards arresting other fleeing gang members. To this end, the Commissioner of Police, Airborne State, CP Ali Garba, reassure law-abiding citizens of their security and safety while warning perpetrators of heinous crime in the state to desist from such acts or face the full wrath of the law. Telecommunication services were yet to resume in Zampara State despite expiration of the two-week period for their shutdown in initially ordered by the Nigerian Communications Commission. Zampara State, a government Zampara State Government, however, says the actual date for the resumption of the telecommunication network in the state is yet to be decided. Jamelu Ibrahim tells us more. The telecommunication services were expected to resume on 17 September 2021. Zamfara State Government, however, says the actual date for the resumption of the services in the state is yet to be decided, as a report of a committee set up to review the impact of the shutdown so far is being awaited. Now that uh, the two weeks have elapsed, the state government is consolidating the gains or otherwise the impact of the measures taken to see whether there is the possibility of extending it or stopping it. At the government regrets inconveniences, the major has continued to cost the law abiding citizens. It enjoins them to be more patient and fervently pray for the overall success of the struggle to restore lasting peace in all parts of Zamfara State. The government is doing everything possible to ensure that they are secured, including their lives and property. Now, how do people of the state view the situation? I'm support, and uh, every uh, sense person supposed to uh, support it because it has helped greatly in 
tighten the funded and the other security problems in the states. We have to cope with it. For most people of Zamfara State, enjoying the socio-economic negative impact of the telecommunication services shutdown is a walkover if it could actually serve the purpose of achieving the much-desired peace and tranquility in the state. In Busawu, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. Promoting peaceful coexistence in any society calls for effective collaboration of all key players and individuals in the environment. This was the consensus of speakers at a one-day seminar on entrenching peace in the nation. Rofia Animation Badnos has details. The media, which is referred to as the fourth head state of the realm, has assumed the responsibility of probing and seeking solutions to national issues, given its role of informing and educating the public. Find a convergence of views, a convergence of ideas, a convergence of solutions by the state actors and those who work in the media. Security is about interest. And then it's good that everybody understand what is national interest and key every effort towards that. That's when we can talk of a secure nation. Journalism is about serving public interest, but you need to do the right thing. Media personnel have therefore appealed to the federal government to implement the Freedom of Information Bill across the country to journalists and the interest of the nation. Amy Badon, Wofia Animation Badmos, NT News. With me, with me in the studio is international scholar on peace and conflict resolution, Professor Isaac Olawali Alba. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you for inviting me. Um, what is your assessment on conflict or violent developments across the country? Well, um, we've been having escalation of uh, problems, conflict, but I think we really need to thank God that uh, our military is up to the task. Uh, we are beginning to see a reversal of the losses that we suffered in the past. Um, if what we are witnessing now uh, has to be taken into con in critical consideration, uh, I am of the opinion that within the next few months, Nigeria will become uh, a more peaceful society. Amen. Um, what really went wrong to the extent that these things are reoccurring? Well, I think, you see, we, we have two uh, approaches to peace. Uh, you have the coercive approach. The coercive approach has to do with forcing uh, the troublemakers to be peaceful. And then we have the non-coercive approach. But I think the gap, the major gap in Nigeria is that we have invested too much on the coercive approach, believing that once you roll out your tanks, you bring the army out, you bring the police out, you will have peace. But it does not actually work that way. We need to invest more in what is called preventive diplomacy, you know, trying to structure the society in a way that will not even enable troublemakers to come out in the first place. And when these troublemakers come out, we must inform ourselves uh, that they have certain needs that should be met. And then we work towards the best way of actually providing the, 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 the means. But I think what one would suggest or what seems to be the way out is for us to use what is called carrot and stick method. Approach. But now we are using more of the stick approach. Okay. Um, is there enough education and public awareness on issues relating to peace and sustenance of peace in no, our I, nation? I think we have a major gap uh, on the issue of uh, peace education. Uh, we have two, two major uh, approaches to peace education. The former one has to do with training people in the university system, in our higher institutions of learning, you know, people who go out there to do the work. And then the non-formal approach is for you to go to the grassroots community and build the capacity of people for peace. Now, the question we should be asking ourselves is, how many universities in Nigeria actually has, a, you know, have a peace studies program? They are very, very few. And then when you look at the non-formal approach, um, most of the NGOs that are doing non-formal peace education in the country are motivated by international agencies. So we need to start investing more on for in, in non-formal peace education. You know, federal government must set some 
money aside, state government must set some money aside, local governments must set some money aside for building capacity at the grassroots level. Thank you very much. And how can Nigeria leverage on the International Peace Day to engage all Nigerians irrespective of tribe, religion, or ethnic diversification to commit to the culture of peace? Well, uh, International Peace Day focuses on three major uh, issues. The first is it is an opportunity for us to celebrate the peace that we have. Secondly, it is an opportunity for us to reflect critically on the peace that we do not have. Then thirdly, it is an opportunity for us to begin to put in place structures for cleaning whatever mess we have created for ourselves. So your question has to do with how do we tap into this particular day into ensuring that the country is uh, more peaceful? One, we must hype the peace that we already have. Why are we peaceful? We must sing the praises of the peace that we have. We must celebrate it. Secondly, the peace that we do not have. We need, we need to ask ourselves critical and sincere questions. Why are we not peaceful? Where, 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 in what, what, part, what went wrong? So, and we need to be sincere with this. And it is when we are sincere with the definition of the problems we have that we now begin to say, okay, this is the way forward. Mm. Recovering better for an equitable and sustainable world. Yes. To what extent is this achievable in Nigeria, especially on methods of achieving this? Well, I think that theme for the year is calling attention to the fact that we have so many problems in the world today because there is no justice. Mm. Because this year, the focus this year is on equity. The question we need to ask ourselves is that are we treating equals equally? So, and the lesson for us is for us to be reminded that peace will not come by the use of force alone. We must actually promote justice. And the more we invest in the promotion of justice, the more peaceful our society would be. That is what the global body is telling us this year. Okay. Um, lastly, do you think there can ever be peace in the world? No, 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 no. Definition of when you define uh, peace uh, scientifically there is no country that is totally peaceful because peace you know peace is defined as absence of physical violence psychological violence structural violence pro plus uh, presence of justice is there any country in the world you go to today you don't see the police is there any country you go into the, to today that is, you don't see the army all that we are just aspiring to do is to ensure that our conflict issues are dealt with in scientific and sustainable manner. And I think that is the goal we should pursue, rather than thinking that we, we can have absolute peace. It does not exist anywhere. Thank you very much. I've been speaking with uh, Professor Isaac Olawali Albert, is an international scholar on peace and conflict studies. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. You're still watching Panorama on the network service of the NTA. More report after this break. Stay with us. You're welcome back. Guinea coup leader Mamadi Dumbaya says he will not bow to pressure from ECOWAS leaders to allow President Alpha Kunde, who was detained during a coup earlier this month, to leave the country. He said this after a meeting with a delegation from the 15-member Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, who were in Conakry, the capital city of Guinea, for talks with leadership of the coup in the country. The delegation include Ghana's President Nana Kufu Adu and Côte d'Ivoire's President Alassane Katara. The, Unite, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization has requested the federal government to consider some of the research institutes in the country as Category 2 institutes and centers under the auspices of UNESCO to facilitate the training of not only Nigerians, but African countries. Director of UNESCO Multisectoral Regional Office for West Africa, Sahel, Dr. Dimitri Sanga, made the appeal while on a courtesy visit to the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Dr. Obunaya Onu in Abuja. Dustin Bim Ui has details. Under the auspices of UNESCO, which are a global network of institutions of excellence in the organization's domains of competence, 
though independent of UNESCO, Category 2 institutes and centers are a privileged partner of the organization with access to UNESCO's logo and international and intergovernmental bodies as well as networks and may leverage UNESCO's international reach and convening powers. And Dr. Sanga thinks some of the research institutes in Nigeria can constitute themselves as these centers of UNESCO, as he also made a case for closing the gender gap for science education. If since the beginning, uh, from school, you don't have as many girls as boys embracing sciences, you will not expect to have as many doctors, uh, uh, women and, and men. You will not to, uh, expect to have as many engineers, women and men. So it will be something of great interest to us uh, to see how our facilities can also be used to uh, help uh, other African countries. The minister also intimated a UNESCO representative of some moves by the Nigerian government to conserve biodiversity and reverse the degradation of biosphere through policies like methanol fuel technology as it will help to manage the effects of gas flaring and environmental degradation. Justin Bemni. Industrial Court sitting in Abuja has ordered the National Association of Resident Doctors to suspend its nationwide strike and resume work with immediate effect pending the outcome of the substantive suit. At the resume trial, counsel to the federal government to Chukumaduka San argued its interlocutory injunction to restrain the doctors from continuing the nationwide strike pending the determination of the substantive matter. He added that doctors our workers who provide essential services, therefore continuing the strike, we cause hardship on citizens. Counsel to the resident doctors, Femi Aborishadi, however, opposed the application and urged the court to discontinence the prayers of the plaintiff. Delivering the ruling, Justice Bashar Atahiru Al-Kali held that no amount of money will compensate for the loss of lives in the circumstances and therefore ordered the resident doctors to suspend the strike and resume work. The proposed strike slated to commence on the 18th of September by the Joint Health Sector Unions, Johesu, and Assembly of Healthcare Professional Association, AHPA, has been put on hold following the resolutions reached at the NEC emergency meeting, but issued a fresh notice of 15 days. A communique at the end of the NEC considered reports of negotiation and reconciliation include the appeal from President Mohamedou Buhari on the need to show understanding with his administration and the president's pledge to pay Panorama from Ibad Donzona Center of the Network Service of the NTA. Thanks for watching. Remember, be a star, join NTA, and stand against rape and rapist. Good afternoon.